Well, he could not see me that time, so what he's alerting to is the sound of the door closing. I don't know, do I just have to hope he decides to search in the other direction? This is a different time. Just before the end. You look like yourself now, and the cradle can see you. If the staff find you, they'll kill you. There we go. There's one last thing you have to do. Go to the top of the staff tower. There's an open window up there. You have to jump out. Then the cradle will think you killed yourself. But you won't really die. You'll just be outside where it can't see you. I'll be waiting for you. So I managed that because all you have to do to trigger the transport to the past is hit the switch, hit the activate button to close the cage while you're inside. If you get outside, then it'll still transport you. So the guy didn't see me. He yellow alerts to the door closing, and there's obviously no avoiding it, so... We've completed the objective, lock yourself in the cage down in the storm cellar to enter the cradle's memories as yourself. Our new objective is leap to your death from the open window at the top of the staff tower. And I remain hopeful that here in the more recent past, just before the end, as she said, we'll be able to get the gold teeth from the morgue. Are you kidding? I'm inside a perfect shadow. Oh well. I'm not gonna count that yellow alert as a bust. I mean, the AI wasn't even there when I closed the door. And it's actually, it's not the sound of it closing either, because it closes before he spawns in. You'll notice that the door automatically opened, and that sound yellow alerted him, but I didn't open the cage, so I'm not calling it a bust. I'm stubbornly maintaining that Ghost is alive and well, and if we can get the bag of gold teeth, the perfect thief will be too. Not supreme, however. We had to use those handy green alert distractions. Uh-oh. Yeah, I knew that was trouble. Let's try a different approach, so I can at least watch what he does. Instead of just going trial and error trying to get up the ladder.
Don't care about the green alert. Oh, come on. He obviously moves, so maybe if I'm patient enough, he'll head back out to the front room. He did just pivot. to the inner cradle. I'm hoping that they let you grab anything you missed when you're in the past as yourself, because once you're in the past as yourself, there's no way to return to the present. So, I would think that design-wise, at that point, they'd have to let you get anything you'd missed. But I have been wrong before. But I hope I'm not this time. Well, before... Before I try too hard with this, let me just get to the morgue to see if I can get the bag or not. If I can, I'll reload to avoid that yellow and keep Ghost alive. Looks like no. Gonna have to deal with the corpse. Well, now I'm curious about something else. I wonder what will happen if I bail out of the staff tower without having the bag of gold teeth. Surely that's a worthwhile investigation. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Well, that was that was stupid. I'm going to I'm going to reload that. Yeah, if 
if I bail out of the staff tower without getting the bag, I wonder, will I just hit the ground and die? Will the mission end even though I haven't quite completed all of the objectives for real? We'll have to find out. Uh-oh. Well, I didn't have any trouble with that before. Hmm. There we go. There we go. Well, yeah, at this point, there's no way for me to get the bag of gold teeth. I guess they give me the restart mission button if I don't happen to have an earlier save. Now I'm really curious what's going to happen if I jump out that window without, uh... Without even having grabbed the bag. I'm gonna wait for him to leave this room. Head up the stairs into the staff tower. Something tells me there's no coming back. I should finish everything else I've got to do first. Okay. Welp. Alright. I guess we'll just have to take a bust to get the bag of gold teeth. means the mission cannot be ghosted. And that's a damn shame. I hate it. But... It's a good thing I kept that save before I even entered the past. Good news, of course, is that in the present, we can just hop right over the counter to get through here. <laughs> Bad news is we're off of staffers and back to inmates. ever so much scarier. And there he is.
How do you like that? He goes into combat mode and alerts his buddy, even though I'm in a perfect shadow. He's still in combat mode. Now he can't reach me, at least. Well, here's what I'm going to do. First, I'm going to reload. I'm just going to kill both of them so I can pinpoint the exact location of the bag of gold teeth. It's the one just past him, so... Not over him, but you know. You know what I mean. Alright, viewers, well here's the next thing I'm gonna do. I'm gonna experiment for a while to see if there's a way to do this. And I don't want you to have to watch it, so... I'm just going to pause recording right here, and I will bring it back after I figure out whether or not it's possible to get through here. So I'll see you in a bit. Alright everybody, well I've teased out the best that I can do. Of course, my little fellow is glitched. He can't get out of his hole in the floor. It seems like he starts patrolling after you wake him up, or at least he's supposed to. So what I'm going to do is wait for his buddy to head up the stairs and then just trigger the proximity alert because there's nothing else for it. And then if you get truly out of sight and wait a while, he'll settle down. Now I'm certain that's going to flag as me being caught and that's fine. It means the mission can't be ghosted. sound you hear then is his alert settling down. So I'll show you what he's doing now. He went from combat down to red. Now he's fully settled and he's attempting to start his patrol. I have to be honest, I don't know where his patrol goes, but he seems like he's trying to head out into the furnace room. It could also be that he's just trying to get to a nice spot and stand stationary. Regardless of what he's supposed to do, after you wake him up, you should be able to get in and get out without too much trouble. So, like I said, just because it's a proximity trigger, it has nothing to do with being seen or heard. There's no way to avoid waking him up. And it will doubtless flag as me being caught. So, you can creep into the room. 
and get over behind him since he's you know he's a little twitchy but for the most part he's facing out that was another green alert which I've never managed to not take so we can get to this dark corner here open up that door come on G opening it seems to have made him curious so I'll wait till he turns away again Now I think I'm good to go in and grab the teeth. Bag of gold teeth, worth 50. They bring me up to 100%. They also are the third piece of special loot. So finally, the objective to find at least three special loot items, three found, is completed. So now let's shut this, and it'll probably turn him over here again. So I'll wait till he settles. Now I should be able to get out the same way I came in. There's a green alert. All right. I'm convinced that's the best we can do. If anyone ever manages to find a way not to trigger that proximity alert, I would be very interested, other than killing him, of course. I'd be very interested to hear about it. But for the moment, I'm going to call it good, and I'm going to go end this mission. Due to that little guy in the morgue, the mission is unghostable. You have to play on expert means you have to get the gold teeth. Getting the gold teeth requires either killing that dude or putting him in full-on combat mode. And actually there's a little segment at the very end that I don't think I'll be able to ghost either. But back to the outer cradle. At least I already teased out good ways to do this part. <clears throat> Let's head down here. Back to the cage. Stand inside, hit close, then go wall flatten outside. Yes, that's it. You're really here in the past. This is a different time. Just before the end. You look like yourself now, and the cradle can see you. If the staff find you, they'll kill you. There's one last thing you have to do. 
Go to the top of the staff tower. There's an open window up there. You have to jump out. Then the cradle will think you killed yourself. But you won't really die. You'll just be outside where it can't see you. I'll be waiting for you. So now... Once again, we have completed the objective, lock yourself in the cage down in the storm cellar to enter the cradle's memories as yourself. And now the only objective we have is leap to your death from the open window at the top of the staff tower. We found all the loot. You know, I wonder if I'm gonna call it a bust, because... He didn't see me and he didn't hear me, right? I remember in the old, old ghost rules. When you proximity triggered a zombie, it wasn't a bust. Damn. I thought not. But if he's over in the other room, then I can just duck into the hallway that leads to the lobby and wait him out there. I don't know if I'm going to call that a bust or not. I mean, he went into combat mode, but he didn't see me and he didn't hear me. And... Like I said, in the first two games, proximity triggers busted Supreme, but they didn't bust Ghost. You'll recall that when you had a prone zombie who would proximity trigger that didn't bust ghost did bust supreme but we already busted supreme I don't think it should make a difference what level the alert happens to go to if a proximity trigger isn't a bust since I managed to do the rest I think I'm actually changing my mind and going to call it a success. Unless someone cares to argue the point. So let's get into the staff tower. There's a spot at the very end at the very top of the staff tower before the jump that I think I probably won't be able to ghost but I don't know for sure alright here we are in the staff tower let's keep it going Hey, a note. Case number one, E. Poshtol, patient history. Entry one, subject arrived via City Watch escort, perpetrator of the infamous Tallow Man murders, deemed unfit to stand trial, wears wax mask to cover extreme facial deformities, admitted for observation and treatment, Dr. Sandbridge. Entry two, 
Sedatives and electrical treatments ineffective. Possesses a cunning intelligence. Extremely dangerous. Refuses to answer to own name. Other patients taken to calling him King No One. Natural leader. Recommend be kept in seclusion chamber. DS. Entry 3. Tricked nursing staff into taking his medications. Nurse Sorrel dead. Nurse Lovewell remains in sick ward. We were unable to reach her before he disfigured her face. Where did he get the wax? DS. Case number 3, S. Eisen, Patient History. Entry 1, delivered by City Watch under suspicion of murder. Patient has marked episodes of narcolepsy during which sleepwalking and other behaviors occur with no recollection of events when awakened. Admitted for observation and treatment, Dr. Pettyhue. Entry 2, water treatments having good effect. Unclear whether the treatment itself is sound or if the subject is merely feigning proper behavior in order to avoid further submergings. Patient allowed to keep an unlit candle, Doc P. Entry 3. Patient caught sleepwalking in the morgue. If patient is developing an affinity for the morgue, could be useful to withhold access as punishment, Doc P. Want to go to the other side, because I think there are notes to read there, too. Okay, but dude saw me. So let's be a little bit more careful, shall we? I vote yes. In this case, being careful is as simple as heading counterclockwise, following him instead of going against his grain. I thought you were eventually able to find these notes on all of the patients, but seems like maybe it's not so. Case number two, M. Gunter, patient history. Entry one, subject brought in by City Watch for observation. Found by officers eating a meal of questionable origin. Dr. Hanscom to take the case. Entry two. Experimental treatments going poorly. Cure unlikely. Subject allowed to move about the hospital with escort. Recommend he be kept well fed at all times. Favorite area is the meal hall. May be allowed there as a reward for good behavior. Patient must not have access to metal utensils, especially knives. Blunt utensils only. Also, remind staff to discourage other patients from using gourmet nickname, Doc Hanscom. So with that, we just need to head into this elevator in the north end. Ride it up to the top. I don't want to be seen by any of these people, so... Oh, damn. Are you kidding? It's never kidding, I'm afraid. Well, this wall worked for not being spotted.
there doesn't appear to be a way to send the elevator back down, so I guess I won't worry about that. We're at the very end. This is the last room. It's also the one I've been worried about. I do think we can probably read more stuff on these desks if we want to. Maybe not. Okay, I guess not. But the problem should be apparent. We have five, uh, five people seated, seated, sitting at that table, and we have to get past them all without any alerts to get to our window. Actually, maybe it won't be as bad as I thought. I can just get around the corner and wall flatten. It seems like maybe I can get by all of them. For some reason, I remembered having to jump on the table and run past them, but it doesn't look like I have to do that, which is good. Yeah, there's nothing up here. We found all of the reading material, sadly, because it's... I like it a lot in this mission. Alright, it's just this corner is the only one I'm worried about. Well, that did not go as well. Hmm. Speed, maybe? What do you guys think? That was a hell of a teleport just then. Did you guys see that? This is another spot where I may have to suspend recording to experiment for a bit to figure out what my best option is. I'm also thinking maybe I can try to use the table as hardcover and the chairs and the people sitting in them. I mean, I do have my gear, but there are no lights I can put out. I wonder how the other side is. I mean, I already yellow alerted one guy, so I know I have to reload regardless, but... Is it identical? Yes. Alright, if I can't, uh... If I don't get it on this try, I'm going to stop recording to spare you the sight of me experimenting, and I'll come back to you with what works. Okay. Alright, folks, I've solved the table. 
I'm reloading the save just when I exited the elevator at the top of the staff tower. And it's actually pretty straightforward. Just have to remember the importance of hard cover as well on top of shadows and noise. So. First you have to get over to this wall. If that happens without any of them standing up, you're good. The next step is to run up and use this chair and the fellow in it as hard cover. It's important to come from this side because you have more shadows to work with. Not quite right. But you see the idea. We can get up to the chair and the hard cover that is both the chair and the guy sitting in it will keep any of the others from alerting, which is good. That's what we're after. I like to wait a few to make sure that step was successfully accomplished. Then you want to start creeping over this way, and it's important to gradually turn because that gives you the most space to move in. S some quirk of how the body awareness in this game works. And then finally you want to turn and crouch walk straight backwards to get through the rest of it. And for whatever reason, that little combination of moves gets you through without alerting anyone. So once you're on the other side, you can just mantle up into the window, crouch down because this is a metal surface, and take the dive. I finally managed to escape from that place, but I think I'm out of my depth here. I saw an old portrait of a girl who looks just like that keeper translator, but how can that be? I only found traces of the hag. I don't think she's been there since Drept saw her all those years ago. So I'm left with questions, and the vial of blood the ghost had me steal. The ghost is beckoning. I think I'd better follow. This isn't over yet. So if you look at our stats, difficulty expert, time elapsed to 98 minutes, loot stolen, 2650 out of 2650, 100%, and times caught is zero. This lends credence to my argument, I think, that the proximity trigger isn't a bust, because even though he's in combat mode, the game doesn't register him as having caught me. So, I'm saying I successfully perfect thiefed it. Opponents blackjacked, zero. Opponents killed, zero. Stealthy kills, zero. Non-combatants killed, zero. Locks picked, 12. Pockets picked, zero. Bodies discovered, zero. Damage taken, zero. Healing taken, zero. Total for game, and day seven will be in here too. That's gonna be a, an awful, horrible embarrassment, but what can you do? Loot stolen, time elapsed, 903 minutes. Loot stolen, 31,500. Times caught, 5. Opponents blackjacked, 1. Opponents killed, 0. Stealthy kills, 0. Non-combatants killed, 0. Locks picked, 118. Pockets picked, 57. Bodies discovered, 26. Damage taken, 0. Healing taken, 0. Obviously, all of these bad stats are present thanks to Day 7 with the enforcers out in the streets. Apply everything I said in day six. If you're too close, it'll flag you as having been caught because there's some weird overlap between recognition of an enforcer and recognition of Garrett. And all those extra bodies were also created by the enforcers. You know this because I have killed no one. So there it is. There's robbing the cradle. Let's look at our gear. Blackjack, dagger, 25 water arrows, 30 ga broadhead arrows, 5 noisemaker arrows, 5 gas arrows, 15 fire arrows, 20 moss arrows. Upgrades, mechanical eye, door glyph, lockpick, climbing gloves, moss arrow upgrade, broadhead arrow upgrade, 37,550 gold, 5 holy water, 5 oil flasks, 10 health potions, 5 explosive mines, 20 flash bombs, 5 gas bombs, 3675 loot. 
I have the velvet bag, the climbing gloves, the compendium of reproach, the glyph key, the keeper ring, the wax mask, the dissolution serum, and all my keys. And I'm ready to hit continue. Next up, we have another day in the city. So I'm just going to save right away and call it good and see you guys next time for day eight. There you have it. That's it for now. Perfect thief in robbing the cradle. Sad to see it go. It's the highlight of the game for me. Oh well. See you next time. Bye-bye.